to sketch graph. Well, at the same graph, we'll say unfamiliar graph, like or graph without any rule. So if give you the rule, you don't really need transformation to sketch for it. You know how to sketch like all different type of graph. So if give you just some like shape, for example, that one, uh, just pretend you don't know what is it. I know it's a square root, but pretend I don't know what is it. Uh, I want to like tell you this is fx and now ask you to sketch, for example, px equals to negative fx plus 4. If we see this notation, we know this is a reflection in the x-axis for, for that graph reflecting the x-axis and then move up by 4 units. So we can just do that and then sketch a quite like accurate graph. Uh, in order to just do the reflection, do the uh, translation, we'll select key points. Okay, so the important thing for this exercise is the key point. Okay, so we need to recognize a couple of key points. For example, we can recognize uh, zero, 0, on this graph. We can find 1, 1 on this graph. We have 4, 2 on this graph, and we have like... 9, 3 on this graph. Like we select some points we can easily read. Okay, we can easily read. Um, okay, so let's let's directly do example 2 because I think example 1 is too easy. You know the equation already. So it's not really like good to try that one. Let's try example 2 part C. So I'll tell you what to do for that one. Okay, first of all, let's see a couple of points. Let's read a couple of points on the original graph. So on the original graph, I will have 0, 1. They are all x, y values. Okay, remember they are all x, y values. They are the old point. Okay, they are the old point. And I can see 1, 2. I can see 2, 4. And I can see 3, 8. And 4, 16 as well. There are a couple of points I can easily read them. I can easily read them. So let's have a look at the transformation. So what I have is a new function, sx. Well, do not write function notation for that. What I'll write is y dash equals to 4 f 2 x dash minus 1 and plus 6. That's the transferred function. Okay, that's the transferred function. So original one is y equals to fx. The original one is y equals to fx. I don't know what's the rule for fx. It's not telling us here. So what I will have is y dash minus 6 over 4 equals to f 2x dash minus 1. Okay, that's what we will have. And then we have y equals to y dash minus 6 over 4, y dash equals to 4y plus 6, x equals to 2x dash minus 1, x dash equals to x plus 1 over 2. Why I make x, y to x dash y dash to be the subject? Because I want to put x, y value in to see the point zero 0,1 become what? Okay, the point one two become what? Like that's the new point in relation with the old points. And then I will draw a table. Okay, I will draw a table. I'll write x dash, well, I'll write in black, x dash equals to x plus 1 over 2, and y dash equals to 4y plus 6. So the original point we have is 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8, and 4, 16, if I'm not remembering that wrong. So that five points. And also one thing you need to pay attention is this point is the end point. Okay, this point after all the transformation, it will still be an end point. Okay, it will still be an end point. 
Another example, if that's a turning point, after all the transformation, that will still be a turning point. If you have a key feature, after the transformation, that key feature is still there. Well, the only difference is might be a maximum turning point before and after the transformation, that become a minimum turning point. But it's still a turning point. A point of reflection, it will still be a point of, ref uh, point of reflection. So the key feature won't change. So we have n point zero one. We want to see the value x become what? The value y become what? So if we sub zero in, we have a half. Okay, we have a half. And we sub one into the function, we have 10. We okay, sub x equals to zero, sub y equals to one. We have a half and 10. So a half and 10 is here. That is still the end point. Okay, that's your last point. Your graph stop at here. There's no graph on your left hand side. There's nothing on um, from zero to a half anymore. And then the next point will be one, two. You sub one in, you have one. You sub two in, eight plus six have 14. And then the next one is two, four. Okay, two, you sub two in, it's three over two. You sub four in, four times four is 16. 16 plus six is 22. Okay, let's label those points. One and 40 is here. One point five and twenty two is already outside here. I, I there's no point for me to keep going on because we just have higher and higher graph. So the graph will look like this. But this point a half and ten must be the end points. Okay, that point a half and ten must be the end points. You can see like. It's easy to do reflection. It's easy to do translation because you know oh, the graph just flip down and then move to this side. But it's very hard to do dilation. How you can decide like how much I dilate, like dilate two, dilate four, how you can decide that? You can only go through this by finding the key points. Okay, find some points you can read originally on the graph and then really calculate what that point will become and then gives a couple of points and complete the trend of the graph. So this is a dilation by effect of fall from the x-axis. Okay, that's a dilation by effect of fall from the x-axis. Okay, so, well, from looking at it, I can't tell whether, like, what's the dilation factor, but through calculation, I can see there's a dilation by effect of fall. Okay, so find key points is very important. Find key points is very important. Uh, you can try the rest by yourself. Let's have a look at example three. Okay, this is a sine graph. Okay, this is a sine graph. Okay, I have midpoint, mid. Um, Midline, midline as C, so that's the midline, that's Y equals to C. So let's label the points which we think it should be the key points. So this point is 0 C, that point is 6 C. First of all, because the domain is given 0 to 6, we know that's 6 C. Also, we know 2 pi over A, like 2 pi divided by A, that equals to 2 pi times 3 over pi, that equals to 6 that equals to 6. So period is 6 as well. That's a complete period. So we have 0 C and 6 C. That's the period. Therefore, the middle must be the midline 3 C. And the middle must be the midline 3 C. So this one is easy to understand. That's 3 over 2 A plus C. Why a plus c? Because the amplitude. 
Also, we know A is greater than C, and A and C are both positive. <coughs> so this is definitely the maximum point. And this point will become 9 over 2 minus A plus C. So C minus A, you go down by A units. Because A is greater than C, so minus A plus C must be a negative number. Like minus 5 plus 2, that must be a negative number. Okay, let's keep reading the question. That's the function Rx, Rx here. Okay, the graph R undergoes the following transformation. A dilation by a factor of 2 from the y-axis. So let's change the x. x dash equals to 2x. A reflection in the x-axis. Let's change the y. y dash equals to minus y. So you dilate by a factor of 2 from the y-axis and then reflect it in the x-axis. So that's what happened. So question says, sketch the graph of Tx on the same set of x-axis above, clearly indicate the coordinates, any endpoints, and maximum minimum turning points. So again, we can find out the root. There are a couple of key features. So as we know, we have 0c, 3c, and 6c. And in the middle, we have 3 over 2, comma, a plus c. And we have 9 over 2, comma, minus a plus c. That's the old point. Okay, that's the xy coordinates. That's the xy coordinates. Now I know x dash equals to 2x, y dash equals to minus y. So that will be 0, 3, 6, 9, and 12. Just enlarge that by 2 times, okay? So you have a period of 12 now, like a period of 12. Minus y, minus c, minus a, minus c, minus c, a, minus c, and then the last one is a minus c. So this will be a positive number, but this is definitely a negative number because A is larger than C. Okay, because A is larger than C. Now we have the five key points now. So zero C. Okay, zero C is still uh, zero minus C. So, you have that point here, 0 minus C. And here will be the value 12. So, we have 12 minus C as well. 12 minus C. And in the middle, you have a 6 minus C. A 6 minus C. So that's the mean line. That's the value on the mean line. Okay, just look at the table. 0 minus C, 6 minus C, and 12 minus C. We have those three points labeled. Okay, next one is 3 minus a minus c. Okay, minus a minus c will be the negative of this height. Okay, the negative of that height. a plus c and then we reflect it down. So it's the same length as that one. But x value is 3. Which is here. 3 minus a minus c. This length and this length, they are the same length. 
Okay, because it's the reflection. That's the reflection for that one. So they have the same size. And the last one will be the reflection of this lens. Okay, it's the reflection of that lens. So it's A minus C at the point six. Which is here. Six A minus C. Okay, this lens and this lens, they must be the same because it's the reflection. That's the reflection. Uh, use the black. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, what, what's that? It's nine, nine, nine. It's not six. It's nine. It's not six. Where's nine? Here's nine. Nine. Minus a minus positive a minus c. So this lens and this lens they are the same, and then you large that by two times for the x value. So now we can complete the graph. Okay, so that's the shape of the graph. That's the shape of the graph. So that's, you have a reflection and you stretch it by two times from the y-axis. So that's how the graph looks like. You can imagine the graph should look like this, like a reflection and then a stretch. Okay, a reflection and a stretch. <coughs> Okay, that's just the idea on how to sketch the um, like gra a familiar graph or graph without any rules by transformation. So you basically look at x dash y dash value and select some key points on the x y graph, and then find the key points and complete the trend. Okay, and complete the trend. Uh, not very hard, and it's not going to be test a lot. There may be only one mark question, like in the exam, like to test you on that. Not really see a lot for this type, but like it's a good skill. You know how to sketch graph. Okay, it's really good for sketching graph. Any questions? If you don't have any questions, I'm done today. Yeah.